Hello, and welcome to another Bionicle video. Today, we're diving back into the strange world of Shiny Toa, this time to build ourselves a team of Shiny Toa Nuva. Now, first things first, if you've never played a Pokemon game before, you're probably wondering what the heck I'm talking about. So, for a bit of an explanation, Shiny Pokemon are special coloured monsters that can be encountered during play. These Shinies are functionally identical to their regular versions, but their rarity, combined with their eye-catching new colours, makes them very desirable. And that's what we're going to be attempting here, Shiny Toa Nuva, the same heroes we know and love in bold new colours. Our previous journey into the world of Shiny Toa focused on the original sets, the Toa Mata, but this time around the operation is somewhat larger in scale. If you saw my original video, you might recall that the Toa Mata are held back from true Shiny glory by the availability of their weapons. For example, you can build a black Tahu or a blue Tahu, but for him that's basically it. Tahu just isn't Tahu without his iconic flame sword, and that piece simply doesn't exist in any colours beyond red, black or blue. Gally comes closest to mastery of all six elements, with four shinies possible using official pieces. Well, five if you count the green one with lime hooks. But a brown Gally is well beyond our reach, since neither her arms nor her hook pieces have ever been released in a suitable colour. In fact, it's impossible to build any shiny brown Toa. Like Gally, they would all need that non-existent sword arm piece in turn, while also needing their own weapons, none of which have ever been released in brown. Pahatu remains the one and only Toa Mata able to wield the element of stone, and it's clear he doesn't want to share that title with anyone. But that all changes with the Toa Nuva, who have very conveniently switched out their limbs and picked up silver weapons instead. That means the only limiting factor here is the masks, and wouldn't you know, I've recently completed a full set of them. So with all six masks in all six colours, and a heck of a lot of spare Toa pieces, we're ready to build a full set of shiny Toa Nuva. So let's get started. First up, it's everyone's favourite Toa Nuva of fire, Tahu Nuva. The hot-tempered leader of the Toa Nuva has two huge blades as his weapons of choice, and a neat little gimmick where they can combine into a slightly awkward looking lava surfboard. His mask, the Hau Nuva, is my favourite of these six Nuva masks, although that's not really saying much with some of the strange design choices for the others. Tahu's recolours are pretty easy to pull off, an entry level shiny if you will. Basically everything we need to rebuild this guy comes in standard release Toa sets, either Mata, Nuva or both. The only exception is unsurprisingly for the brown Tahu, because of course it is, but we'll come to that in a second. We've got a green Tahu for Lee Koro, a white Tahu for Kokoro, a black Tahu for Onyu Koro looking very sinister, and my personal favourite of the bunch, a blue Tahu for Garkoro. An affinity with the water element gives him a somewhat different and more traditional use for that surfboard. Then finally we have a brown Tahu Nuva. Yes, our first brown shiny! This is the only version of Tahu to require pieces not traditionally found in Toa sets, these being the connectors used for his hands. We can't borrow these bits from Pahatu because although the rest of the Toa Nuva have hands that match their body colour, for some reason Pahatu Nuva has black hands. Why is it always Pahatu causing problems? Is he wearing gloves? Does he hate us? Who knows? Luckily those brown connectors are still pretty easy to track down, since they could be lifted from the brown rock sheet, Panrak. Next up, it's Pagoda Face himself, Liwa Nuva. The first Nuva set that I ever bought, back in those heady days when I was still a sucker for toy companies adding new accessories to trick you into buying the same thing twice. Those big blades are undeniably pretty cool though, and the box art suggests they can even serve as a pair of wings, although in practice this particular gimmick is a little bit questionable. Anyway, Liwa is another fairly easy shiny to pull off, sharing an almost identical build with Tahu. My favourite of the bunch is this red Liwa. The jagged shape of his mask, along with the rest of his design, really makes him look quite demonic, something that I never really appreciated on his regular green version. We also have a blue Liwa, a white Liwa, a black Liwa, and of course a brown Liwa, raiding another pair of brown connectors from Rakshi Panrak. Look what you've done, Pahatu. This is your fault. Moving on, we have Gali, the Toa of Water. Or Toa of Raindrops if your name is Makuta Gorast and you're feeling a bit condescending. As mentioned previously, Gali already holds the title for most shinies possible in her matter form, thanks to the many colours of her hooks. But only in her Nuva form can she own all six elements. We're starting to get a teeny bit more complex with this one, because uniquely among the six main Toa Nuva, Gali uses the Nuva leg piece for her arms as well, a trait shared only with Takanuva. Anyway, we have a very striking white Gali for swimming through arctic waters, a red Gali for swimming through volcanic lava, an earthy black Gali for swimming through mud or maybe tar, and there's a green galley for swimming through trees, I guess, and a brown galley for swimming through... yeah, I'm gonna stop there. Once again, the brown one needs a couple of connectors from Panrak, who at this point hates Pohatu as much as Pohatu hates sharing. Next up, it's Oniwanuva, the Toa of Earth, armed with two honking great chainsaws that can also act as a pair of highly destructive rollerblades. And I'm not sure who on the creative team decided to give him those little T-Rex arms, but it means we need to go raiding parts from the Borok in order to build his shiny forms. We've got a red Oniwa for hanging out in volcanoes, a white Onua for the Arctic, a blue Onua for the ocean, although I'm not sure what use those chainsaws will be underwater, a green Onua for the swamps and forests, and finally a brown Onua for the deserts. 
Thematically, I think the brown one works best, since it's not much of a stretch to go from Earth to rock, and its tools work just as well in both environments. If only we could talk Onua into permanently taking over the role. We might finally have a Tora of Stone who's not a smug, selfish ass set to the team, because Pahatu's the best. Look at him there with his upside down body and unique action feature. Why punch when you can kick? He can even pop his claws off to make a soccer ball. What more could you possibly want? It hardly seems worth continuing this little experiment, because everyone knows you can't improve on perfection. But Pahatu has generously agreed to let us try anyway, so here we go. Behold, the one true Toa of Stone, now slumming it as Toa of Water. Degrading himself as Toa of Air. Shaming himself as Toa of Earth. And humiliating himself as Toa of Ice. All in the name of science. What a champ. And here he is as Toa of Fire, taking his rightful place as leader of the Toa Nuva. Let us continue to bask in the glory of Pahatu, Master of Speed. Undisputed King of the Thigh Gap. A true champion among... Is he gone? Good, let's move on. And finally we come to the Toa of Ice, Kopaka, who has two big blades that can double as ice skates, along with a mask that seems to have more in common with Tahu's original Harrow than the one it's supposed to represent. And for all of you Kopaka fans out there, I'm sorry to report that shiny Kopakas are the most complex of the bunch to pull off. Firstly, that shield piece in the colours we need is pretty uncommon, and in some cases non-existent. Official colours for this piece include red, black, and of course white, but not green, blue, or brown. It does come in reddish brown, which is more or less close enough to pass as a shield for a stone Kopaka, but that still leaves green and blue. Gobrix carries a custom version of this part in blue, although even they couldn't help in green. But not all is lost, because back in the year 2004, LEGO released a strange series of sets called X-Pods, which were little brick-built models sold in plastic storage containers. And each X-Pod container has a lid that's basically the same piece as Kopaka's shield. It's a little bit more chunky, but we can just pretend it's like a heavy-duty riot shield or something. But then we come to the second problem, which is his left arm. The piece used for this particular appendage is the old Toa Mata sword arm, the same piece that was partly to blame for our inability to create any brown Toa Mata. That should be abundantly clear by now, because the original Pahatu is such a special snowflake, he doesn't come with the tan sword arm, which means we can't borrow one from him. And it's never been released anywhere else. So for the brown Kopaka, we're going to deviate slightly from the standard build and use a regular limb instead. But since his shield is such a large piece, his arm is mostly hidden anyway, which hopefully means our sneaky bit of improvisation isn't going to be too distracting. Anyway, with that out of the way, we're good to go. So we've got a fiery red Kopaka, a watery blue Kopaka with that custom Gobrix shield piece, an earthy black Kopaka looking almost like a shadow version. Then we have the green Kopaka with that makeshift X-Pod lid shield. And finally the brown Kopaka with his slightly wonky left arm and a reddish brown shield. And that's it! With Kopaka out of the way, our tour of shiny Toa Nuva must sadly come to an end. At least until Zion Tyra releases his next batch of custom masks and gives us Takanuva's mask to play around with. Even so, building our 36 regular Toa Nuva was quite an undertaking in itself, so if you enjoyed this video, please do all the usual stuff like liking and subscribing to appease the YouTube gods, and be sure to let me know which one was your favourite of the bunch. Next up is probably going to be the 6 Toa Mata as Toa of Light, so stay tuned for that one. But until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Ta-ta!